Hello there, this is a quick short video on GT Studio Orcs. I'm going to just run through what I've got, little projects I'm doing, putting them together, ready for airbrushing and then painting. I've got in front of me their range of Orcs, which I believe are possibly 3D design Orcs that they've then had printed in um, and then cleaned up and made into resin models. Someone may correct me and say actually they are hand sculpted, but I think they're 3D originally just because they've got so much muscular detail and fine detailing which would be difficult to sculpt on but uh, you're welcome to correct me if that is not the case so what I'll do is um, zoom in so you can get a quick, quick look at the different scales and sizes of these models they're all 33 mil, so 30 to 33 that heroic scale which uh, so many models are in now like the Games Workshop and Privateer Press models that have all kind of crept up from 28 mil to being slightly chunkier but uh, here we go, I shall switch over to the stump down here, so we get a quick stump view. Technology at work, and did that work? No, it didn't. That's it. Bosh. So, here we go. So, I shall lock on there, initially, at the... Uh, at the big guy. I believe this is champion version 2 they call him of the set and then uh, beneath that I have various of the sort of female torsos of their orcs and the male torsos down here as well and uh, you can see I, I can't remember exactly but I think this one is the Queen's torso which I haven't built yet so you can see when she's up on that 50 mil base the sort of difference in in size there between the champion and uh, one of the females, although she's slightly bigger anyway than uh, well, maybe she's about the same size as these guys. So these will go on your traditional sort of 30, maybe 40 mil base. I'm going to confirm that when I start putting them onto bases. And these bigger guys I've done on the 50 mil. So if I spin him around there, so you can get a good a good view from every angle. For the life of me, I can't remember the make of this base. I think it's a Cyborg base. If not, it's Micro Art Studio. And uh, it's got a nice sort of ruined section on there. So, yeah, so what I'll do now is just zoom in to talk about some of the finer details on there. So, one thing you can see straight away is on the belt buckle here, Behind the buckle, this is his lower leg section, and this top section was glued into there. And you can see that that nice sort of buckle area is hiding where some of that uh, upper torso has gone in. So great design that someone's thought, okay, I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll hide some of the seam there. You can still see the seam on the edge where the end of that um, pin vise is. However, it's very nicely disguised. Uh, equally, where the head goes on they've done the classic where on the neck they've put a um, sort of metal neck brace necklace and when you do that you end up with um, a nice area to, to clean up so you could put some green stuff in there or leave it and it still kind of nearly looks kind of natural in fact around the front of that head you can see that underneath where that um, a neck brace thing is with these big horn sections on there fits in nightly, nicely and looks pretty clean. I was going to say one area where perhaps it did need a bit of green stuff which I haven't done but just where you can see the arms go in here I'll say the light's not great if I move this light, little light around into that bit there we go right you can see the seam up inside there and again, pretty perfect considering that's just super glue that's gone in there rather than any um, green stuff. In fact, you probably don't need to green stuff that arm, it's gone in okay. The other one, of course, is hidden behind the armoured plating. But ah, you can see that I could probably do with some a very small bit of tidy up in there and over this side to make sure that the models are very cleanly put together. 
So yeah, some green stuff needed there and over this side. More milliput for gap filling. Oh yeah, there was one issue and that was the there was a massive air bubble up here and I started to look at just filling it in on his hammer but I, in the end I sort of carved it out and I'll probably trace a couple of cracks through that area. Just looks like a large chunk has then chiseled off the end and snapped off maybe when he stumped something in the past. So there we are, that's the York Champion. I've left the others on for scale although they're not on their uh, bases. Oh, and here's the York Shaman that they've got as well in the range. If I move this guy out of the way, you can see, again, he's even skinnier and smaller than the uh, female. But fantastic model again, great detailing. Somewhat bendy staff, but should be able to get away with that because it looks like it's a wooden style staff, so you could get away with that. And um, then removing these, we'll put on one of these ones. I think this is like the King model or something. Um, I'll need to look on the website in a minute to confirm. Just put that right back over there from one side. And you can see again, fantastic, sort of inspired by that Sauron style Lord of the Rings movie armour and the, with the spikes and spines on it. I wanted to talk about the cloak actually because they do have a seam here. I've only just started to clean it up. I need to put some filler material in there and then sand it to make that seamless before it's um, base sprayed with its primer. The one nice feature about that cloak was there was an indentation in the underside of this section of the cloak that fits on the calf plating under here. It's difficult to see, but it means you're getting a really good glue fit on the back of the leg and at the top, combination of which means it's on there firmly. So great design again that someone thought, oh, I'll tell you what, I'll put a hole in the back of that uh, cloak, just the indentation. So very good feature. The head again, um, it barely looks like I've glued it on because the seam is so neatly put together. So uh, great work I feel in terms of sculpt and it should take an airbrush and then some uh, painting on there to bring that up. And the last of these bigger style sort of champion king kind of ones that they've got is this one that's fully armoured and uh, he's carrying a... I'm going to fit him on that base actually like this. I pin them as well when I put them on the base but he needs his sort of hammery mace which again has that sort of Lord of the Rings theme to it. I've put that hole in there myself with the pin vise and that fits on this side here like that. Once that's glued on the whole thing will sort of pull together nicely. Obviously that is coming off the edge of the base but wow it's a big model and it looks looks quite cool with that uh, even though it is overhanging it's nicely done. Oh, the back of this guy, if I spin him round, you can see he has those large blade-like armour on his uh, back as well. That was a separate uh, glue on section on the top. I think this one I probably had the most trickiness with because I dry-fitted everything, but when I finally glued on the arms, I didn't put them on as well as I could do, so the hands weren't a perfect match with the, uh, with the shaft of the hammer. So they've gone in okay and they look pretty seamless, but I'll probably just at the end of that pin vise there, you can see as an area I need to fill in with a bit of green stuff just to tidy it up. And that was my own fault for not really um, paying enough attention while I was gluing on those hands and the arms, which resulted in them um, not fitting perfectly. So yeah, the hands are connected to the shaft, uh, which means they're sort of that solid join when you put them on. Yeah, so I've got to pin that guy, I've got to sort of, I've cleaned up his feet already, but I put a hole in there, a small bit of brass wire to pin him onto that. So I just use this sort of standard um, brass wire and the pin vice drill to sort of drill into his feet. Um, I, I guess it's worth mentioning the, the hole on the bottom of the thing, which I've drilled in there and cleaned up, ready for the piece of brass wire to go between the shaft and the head of the weapon. It's 
quite a nice size as in sometimes you get resin bottles like this and they might not give you enough to to get a decent hole in that's plenty of resin on there to get a good hole between that and the uh, the shaft so that will go on quite neatly there so yeah looking good oh there's one extra piece that goes on this one which i'm not sure i'm going to put on is at the back of his head at the base of this sort of um, headdress thing there's like a, a top knot of hair that hangs out to the side and I've left that off for now it looks a bit fiddly I'm not sure if I'm going to put it in or leave it I think it looks fine without the extra top knot of hair coming through so I'll probably leave them as is so the one last thing I will do before signing off is I will just show you their website and you can just see some of the other models so female wolf riders you can just see how dynamic they've made those fantastic uh, looking and um, yeah here's the Orc Warriors and these are the ones that are the sort of standard size uh, models when I say standard size they're all in the same scale they just happen to be smaller because the champions are seen as um, the bigger ones and the goblins are nice too here I haven't ordered any goblins but uh, I do think they're great models um, if I go to the first page I can show some of their bigger models. Look at this one, the work in progress Orc Warlord mounted on dragon, that looks nice. And the Orc Queen there on a beast looks fantastic. But there you go, there's the Orc Warlord version 2, that's the one I showed you I had. And you've also got the Orc Queen, that's, that's the one I was standing up. And there's the Orc Warlord V1 with the large hammer. You can see cost wise 25 euros for that guy so he's not cheap but it's a, it's a massive model and there's the orc champion that looks kind of almost like a hulk really and um, one of my favorites of the set I think with that pose with a foot up on the rock so just so you can see him again one more time in real life oh again 20 euros I mean Games Workshop charge more for some small models so I don't think that's extortionate but you do have to be really into your miniatures to uh, to invest that much I guess so there he is one more sort of look of him in the flesh so to speak in the resin on the stump here so yeah great and I think they look good on these um, bases too the resin bases brings them out as well although I never really want the base to sort of look better than the model it certainly brings it together nicely especially with that sort of extra chunk of rock there sort of pulls it all together oh the nameplates those are from versatile terrain in the UK I've done another video on the nameplates um, and those are 3d printed um, directly from a 3d printer and you choose your names and you choose the size for these larger bases and um, versatile terrain will print them and send them in the post to you and I, I like to make up my own names really for these uh, for these models these aren't the official names so that one's a Gorn Jarl slightly obscured by his uh, sword there so that's it um, let's go back to to the view Ah, there I am. So I can say goodbye and uh, thanks for listening in to this one. It's been short and sweet really, just talking about these orcs, which I think are fantastic models. So thanks very much for listening in and uh, please comment, like and subscribe. Cheers, bye.